Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Who is like unto our God? Who is like unto our God? How great, how great, how great is our God. How great is our God, how great is his name. He is the greatest one forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. And he says, I will lead you if you will trust in me. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thou art great and greatly to be praised. Our Father, you reign. Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. And all honor, all praise, all glory is to you, our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come just now to say... Thank you, O King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you that you're not just a part of our lives, but you are truly our everything. Your love reaches way down deep within and passes all our human understanding. And there will always be a song for you, we sing. Words alone just can't express our heart's desire. Our gratitude for one more day, our needs you have supplied. Your warm embrace and your tenderness, your patience with us through all our mess. Lord Jesus, we have come to one conclusion. You are truly the best. And so we say hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor, all praise, all glory to you, our King. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Take full control, Holy Spirit of God, all of you and none of us. Lead us to the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Lead us where you desire for us to go. Teach us what you desire for us to know. Show us what you desire for us to, to be and how we are supposed to live and speak and move and have our being. Have your way, Holy Spirit of God. For any other way is a way of failure. Any other way of thinking is a way that is not of you. Any other way of speaking is demonic and satanic. And so, Lord, we want to speak as you speak. We want to see what you show us. We want to hear what you tell us. And we want to live how you desire for us to live. So have your way, O oh God. And we'll be faithful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the mighty and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua, the Amashiach of Nazareth, as known in the Hebrew tongue. Blessed be the name of the Holy One of Israel, he who was and is and is to come, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the conquering Lion, hallelujah, the one true and living God, he who is great and greatly to be praised, he who is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Good morning, good morning to each and every one of you family. Good morning to from India. Hallelujah. Good morning to India. In the, no, good morning, good afternoon, India. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Anointed woman of God. Her feet is on the soil of India. And I declare, I prophesy that India shall not be the same again. India shall no longer bow to foreign or false or man-made gods or man-ordained gods. But India shall be transformed. India shall begin to, begin to see a massive wave of Christian Jesus Christ led blood wash. Hallelujah. People of God are rising in that nation. I declare that India shall become a nation whose God is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For wherever the sole of our feet trod, we shall own. I declare that as the soul, uh, the soles of the feet of Patricia Golson walks on the soil of India, so India shall begin to transform as the blood of Yeshua fell from his side, from his head, from his hands, from his feet and hit the rock at Golgotha and broke it and owned it and took dominion over it and went into the soil and traveled distances to the various tombs and arose men and women of God who went into the towns from the dead and preached the gospel, 
transformed many so shall it be that at the soles of the feet of this woman of God on the soil of India it shall be like the blood of Yeshua ah God Almighty at Golgotha and it shall move through hallelujah various places and spaces altars will be torn down in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth altars to baal altars to cows altars to various other gods shall be torn down as dagon fell and bow at the feet of the of the of the of, of, of god hallelujah in the storeroom e god almighty hallelujah so shall every other god in india bow to the lordship of jesus christ there is only one god most people don't like to hear it too many people don't like to hear it but there is only one god his name is jehovah his name is yahweh his name is the i am that i am his name is yah his name is yeshua his name hallelujah is jesus hey god hallelujah he is el elian he is elohim he is god all by himself there is no god like jehovah there is no god like our god hallelujah he is the god that created the heavens and the earth all other gods are the works of men hallelujah the works of lucifer he is the most high god and there is none like him come on give him some praise this morning he is lord he is lord he has risen from the dead and he is lord every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that jesus christ of nazareth is lord he is lord he is lord hallelujah come on tell him say lord jesus you are lord you are lord from beginning to end you are lord and there's no place for argument you are lord yes sure you are lord hallelujah hallelujah as we acknowledge him as lord i'm telling you right away right away i feel the presence i'm covered in goosebumps and we haven't even started yet we haven't even warmed up yet but glory to the name of the holy one of israel those who call upon his name shall experience him my desire is to speak to him face to face to encounter him in his word to encounter him the encounter him divinely my desire is to hug the lord ah uh, before i die before his actual return my desire is to encounter him what's your desire concerning yeshua do you have a desire do you mean do you desire to come up higher do you desire to experience his fire do you desire hallelujah just to be like a flyer advertising him or do you desire to be a carrier of his glory Glory to God. Sandara. Hey, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we in the fourth watch hour desire to be, hallelujah, who you desire for us to be, who you want us to be, where you lead us, we will follow. What you tell us, we will hear and obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. We glorify you this morning, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are awesome in this place. I declare and decree that every nation that is represented in this um, in this family every nation that is represented in this family wherever you were born wherever you are living now wherever you desire to live i declare that place blessed i declare that place ready prepared for you i declare that the soles of your feet shall transform the place where you are and the place where you are going hallelujah i believe that we are able to speak into the now and into the future in the mighty name of jesus christ and so wherever you plan to live where whichever house if you are if you're living in a space now and you want to move to a different space hallelujah <coughs> i declare by the authority of the lord jesus christ that that space that place has already been prepared for you hallelujah to the king of kings it was prophesied that liberty for living ministries will be expanding and moving to a different location and so as my feet trod upon this upon the soil of jamaica i declare that because it can permeate to far distances that that space has now been prepared and has now been owned because my footsteps are, are are treading on the ground of kingston and so i declare that wherever that space is it is already owned in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare that the funds 
the resources to take over that place is already uh, released in heaven and it's on its way it will arrive soon by wire transfer sometimes from one bank to another it takes a few days for the funds to hit the account but I know that the transfer has been initiated and so we are that's that's how we have to start believing that whatever it is that we desire to have because the Lord says that he will grant us the desires of our heart once we have asked it once we have desired it in our heart once we have said Lord I want to be a, a soldier for you I want to be I want to grow in you I want to know your word I want to meet you face to face I want to, 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 to live in a different community a different neighborhood I want to live in a different country I want to fulfill your purpose wherever I am I want a different job I want a child I want to be married I want my marriage to be a, a, an example to others whatever it is that you desire according to the will of God the wire transfer has been made uh, but sometimes depending on what's happening sometimes the bank a hey God has some issues uh, from bank to bank sometimes there is a hold up in the atmosphere between the banks because it is traveling through the air or oh, somebody got to hear me this morning and sometimes the Prince of Persia will hold up your wire transfer come on somebody sometimes it is our bank that has a problem sometimes we're the one that is not putting in the right code the right transfer code and so we can't see the money in our account because we're not using the right code but when all things are in alignment hear me somebody hallelujah when all things are in alignment we will see quickly hallelujah because God on his side when there is a hold up in what is supposed to be transferred to us he has Michael he has Gabriel he has legions 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 of angels that he can send to 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 this dislodge the clog to plunge whatever is blocking up come on to cut off the hands of any prince of greece or persia that is blocking any principality or power that is stopping our wire transfer and so this morning i'm saying to you that the lord jesus christ of nazareth has already hit send he has already hit send and so if you have not yet seen the transfer in your account you got to go back and check check to see come on glory to god check to see hallelujah check to see what it is what is it on our side that's holding up daniel saw that there was a hold up and he fasted and he fasted and he said i'm not gonna stop fasting until hallelujah the blockage has cleared and my wire transfer hit my account uh, have you been waiting on a wire transfer from heaven have you been waiting on a wire transfer from heaven come on somebody I know I have I have been waiting on a wire transfer from heaven hallelujah and Satan and his demons and devils have been holding up either because of what they have caused me to confess or what they are doing just to try and be their best but this day as the Lord gives us revelation I'm saying to you Lord reveal to us reveal to us in the fourth watch hour reveal to us in this fourth watch family what is holding up our wire transfer what is holding up our the, the, the blessings from hitting our account what is is causing us to go online and not see your blessings in our account father we ask you to reveal to us today that we might know and make the necessary adjustments make the necessary correction come on glory to God hallelujah it's time for us to see hallelujah the wealth of the wicked transferred to our account it's time for us to see hallelujah the enemy tremble at our very presence for the anointing to fix problems the anointing to change atmospheres the anointing to shift purpose is already transferred to our account and we need to now access and begin to spend from that but hey come on glory to God we need to start spending from the Holy Spirit that has been deposited in our account or oh, somebody got to hear me this morning or oh, there is a financial move there is a financial move not just money but a, a, a 
a process there is a process a financial process that has taken place in our lives and God is saying if you can understand it like a financial transaction then you will get it God says he has deposited the Holy Spirit in our bank account oh come on somebody our bank account is full and running over and so we now have to learn how to spend from that account we now have to learn how to access that account too many of us have forgotten the passcode uh, the passcode to access the Holy Spirit uh, too many of us have, uh, have forgotten because our passcode is too full our passcode is two four letter words uh, my passcode for my bank account in the natural uh, is four numbers uh, oh come on somebody but the passcode to access the bank account of God uh, is two four letter words uh, or oh, can somebody tell me what those two four letter words are if you're in the spirit if you know how to access hallelujah the glory of God if you know how to get into the ATM that is called the human being and access the funds of the Holy Spirit somebody type one and somebody type another who knows those two four letter words that gives us access hallelujah to grace access to overflow access to mercy access to power love and a sound mind access to being the head and not the tail access one person say pray come on who else somebody else say pray come on what's the access words there are two access words two access words come on if you pray and you don't have them yes somebody just put one l-o-v-e love is an access word somebody says love and pray no hallelujah uh, sorry, I, 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 I misspelled. One is four letters and one is five. Sorry, sorry, my bad. One is four letters and one is five. I misled you. I apologize. So pray is not wrong, but it's not the word. It's not the access. You don't, you pray after you have access. Faith, that's it. That's it. Love and faith. If we apply love and faith, come on, hallelujah. If we apply love and faith, we access everything that God has for us. Everything that is available in heaven, love and faith will access it. Is somebody hearing me this morning? I'm saying to you, our prayer must be, Lord, fill me with love and faith. Fill me with love and faith. The Bible last night, we did Bible study. And God says, oh, no man, nothing. Come on, let no debt be outstanding except the continuing debt of love. That's so powerful. Glory to God. If we love continually, if we love forever, if we love consistently, understand that by faith, come on, faith, work it by love. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he says, hallelujah, by love, all things, hallelujah, are possible. On these two laws, all the laws and the prophets, all the laws and the prophets will be wiped away. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. If we love God and love people and then walk by faith every day, nothing shall be impossible for us. We will live better than Daniel. We will live better than Ezekiel. We will live better than Samuel. We will live better than David. We will live better than Jeremiah. We will live better than Elijah and Elisha combined. We will live better than even Peter and Paul, James and John, they didn't have TikTok, they didn't have uh, Wi Fi, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have Twitter, they didn't have uh, Instagram, they didn't have Arrows Internet Radio, they didn't have YouTube. And so, I'm saying to you, they might just be, they might be as powerful uh, in the natural with us, they might be able to. To, to, to shift things in the spirit uh, but they cannot compete with us uh, because we can stay right where we are and minister to someone face to face uh, all the way in Madagascar all the way in India Delhi or oh, somebody need to hear me somebody all we got to do is turn on the telly and we're live in Delhi oh hallelujah to God Almighty
and said there is no way that they back then can be more powerful than us because they had access to the same Holy Spirit that we have access to but we have access to medium we have access to platforms we have access to opportunities to get right into the homes of people without leaving our house Paul had to travel from Jerusalem to Rome he had to travel to to to, to Colossa he had to travel to, to Corinth he had to travel to Ephesus he had to travel to uh, Thessalonica he had to travel to all of these places and many more ah it, it it took a toll on his body he had to travel by sea and by land he had to travel to all these places I am sitting right here now and I am in for um, Fort Lauderdale in sister Quenda's house come on hallelujah I am I am I am in Miami in, in John Jones house I am in Canada in Rush's house I am in Dwayne Park in Marlon's house come on somebody I am in India in Antipat's room come on somebody hallelujah are you hearing me I can be at the same place and in different places at the same time how could anything that they did before be better and more powerful than what we are able to do and so what we see Paul and Peter and James and John and Jesus do we can do an even greater ah right now I'm speaking to three different people at the same time and I'm then speaking to other people come on when Paul went to to to, to the Colossian church and he spoke the people in the Colossian church would have heard and would have remembered and would have tried to tell others but when I speak on Facebook when I store the, 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 the live on Instagram when I store the live on TikTok people for generations to come can go and look on the page and still be ministered to they can still feel the same anointing Two, we, two years, five years, a hundred years from now if the Lord tarries. And so that makes our generation uh, have better access to power, have better ability to demonstrate anointing and grace uh, more than they of the past. And so we have no excuses. We must tap into the glory. Tap into the glory. Hallelujah. 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 We must tap into the glory. Hallelujah. Too many of us have Instagram pages, TikTok pages, uh, YouTube pages, Facebook pages, and we've never posted anything live on our Facebook. We're afraid that people might see and say, oh, it's a Christian, don't, don't deal with her. Oh, he's a Christian, don't talk to him. Oh, he's a Christian, uh, uh, we can't be friends with him anymore. We're so afraid, but fear is not of God. For the Lord says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Yes, will you be attacked for your faith? Of course. But Jesus said, if the world loves you, then you are none of his, because the world first hated him. And so if the world hates you, just be of, be of good courage, because it hated your father, it hated your Lord, it hated your God, it hated your king, and still hates him today. Policemen, human policemen in various countries, in various countries, first world countries countries that say they have religious freedom countries that say publicly governmentally even constitutionally say they have religious freedom and yet policemen who are normal human beings who are married with women with wives and children police women who are married with husbands and children are going about arresting people for just declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord arresting them taking them to jail putting them in handcuffs like they're criminals yet they say according to the Constitution of the nation that there is religious freedom you are free to declare people are free to ignore you if they so choose but the only thing that they do not wish to ignore is those who preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because they want to silence us they want to marginalize us they want to wipe us out satan's plan is that everyone else you can stand on the roadside and say lucifer is god lucifer is lord lucifer is king lucifer you can put up statues and effigies and all kinds of things all over the place about lucifer you can have parades with effigies of lucifer but if you ever try to imitate uh, or to put a cross or any image of jesus or anything uh, like the word of god 
all of a sudden people are offended and, 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 and it should be removed. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Where is the religious freedom? It's only freedom for those who fit the status quo of those in charge. That's the only freedom. You're only free to say what someone else tells you to say. You're only free to do what someone else tells you to do. But I guarantee you this day that we are free because the sun has set us free and who the sun sets free is free indeed we are free to think we're free to speak we're free to live and we have to learn how to access that freedom and so i'm saying to you this morning by the grace of god accessing our freedom comes from two words love and faith love and faith this family this Fort Watch family, we are going to impact this world. We are going to impact our nation. We are going to impact our workspace. We are going to impact our community. We are going to impact our family. Like Daniel impacted Babylon through four kings. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego impacted Nebuchadnezzar when he, they facilitated the fourth man in the fire. Hey God, like Jeremiah impacted hey, the Babylonian king. Hallelujah, that he sent his, his main general to get him. Oh, somebody got to hear me. Your enemies will send for you because they're saying you're too anointed, you're too powerful. If we learn how to access the glory of God, if we learn how to access the powerful anointed spirit that is in us, our enemies will send for us. Or the same people that pass laws that you can't preach will send for us and say, come teach. Oh, somebody got to hear me. The Ethiopian eunuch never grew up understanding anything about God. The Ethiopian eunuch didn't understand anything about Jesus. But when he began to study, oh, God provided Philip. Ah, hallelujah. You got to hear me. Are you a Philip today? I release the anointing of Philip. I release the spirit that took Philip to various places. I released the evangelistic anointing that was upon Philip, upon everyone that is hearing me now, according to the will and purpose of God. But I declare that the, the, the foundation hallelujah of the evangelistic anointing will be built on the two pillars of love and faith love and faith father by your anointing father by your grace father by your glory i release upon your people today i release upon your people this day the anointing of the evangelist built and carried by the foundation of love and faith in the mighty name of jesus christ lord may philip and stephen see the actions of every Fort Watch family member and say, wow, they got it good. Wow, they got it great. Wow, they are flowing in the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, pour out. Father, carry us. Carry us in the greatness of your anointing. Carry us, O God. Give us access, O God Almighty. Teach us how to walk in the fullness, not in part, not in a little bit, not in a percentage but in the fullness of love in the fullness of faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have discovered that though the Holy Spirit is the source of all power and the source of new dimensions love and faith are the keys that accesses his work accesses hallelujah the opening of the doors and so father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we ask you this morning Teach us how to access the glory of the Holy Spirit by love, hallelujah, true faith, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pour out, O oh God, uncommon, liquid love and gift of faith unto us today in the name of Jesus Christ. And while you're doing that, Lord, may the windows of heaven open and the spirit of wisdom and understanding come forth out of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of counsel and might come forth out of the Holy Spirit upon us. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord arise out of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And let the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit be manifested in the mighty name of of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ the fruit of the Spirit 
hallelujah has its 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 effectiveness in love the gifts of the holy spirit has its effectiveness or their effect effectiveness in faith i'm saying to your people of god in order for the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit to be manifested through us by the holy spirit we have to access the fruit by love and the gifts by faith hallelujah glory to god come on hallelujah some of us have been fasting and praying asking god god i want to move in the gifts of the spirit the gifts of the spirit and we're wondering why we have not seen that manifestation why aren't we moving in the gifts of the spirit prophetically and word of wisdom and word of knowledge come on why aren't we moving in the gifts of the spirit lord i have been walking holy and upright before you by your spirit I have been doing what you asked me to do. I've been fasting, praying, reading the Bible, praying in the spirit, doing, uh, trying to live righteous and holy before men and before you, but I'm not seeing the gifts moving. I'm not seeing the fruit moving. And God is saying, that's because you have not yet combined them in the way that I want you to. I want you to access, hallelujah, the fruit of the spirit by love, in love, for love and the gifts of the spirit by faith in love for love come on glory to god and so if you want to pray to see someone healed only because you want people to call you mighty man or mighty woman of god then it will hardly ever happen but if you want to see someone healed because you love people and you want to see the suffering go the pain go come on you want to see joy and hope return to the people who are oppressed and depressed by Lucifer. Then, then, hallelujah, you will have access to what God had access to. Because it's all in love and all by faith. All in love and all by faith. Come on, let me say that again. Everything that we need for life and godliness is in our account in love by faith in love by faith it can change how we live if we know how to pray if we know what god has given us it can change our lives by faith amen change our lives fully and so i say hallelujah exciting times are ahead for those who learn how to access our accounts if we learn how to access our account and flow from our account there is no end in sight you know if if you have a hundred million us dollars in your account and i know that sounds like a lot of money and some of us would say boldly without fear that if i had a hundred million dollars i would never go broke again i would never go broke again i would have money for the rest of my life my family would have money if i had a hundred million us dollars i would have generational wealth well, let me tell you, there are people who have had much more than that and are broke. There are people who have put their hands on much more than that and got broke. Amen? The only thing, the only thing you cannot be broke again in this life, having owned, is the truth of the wealth of the Holy Spirit. The moment we come into the reality of how wealthy we are by the Holy Spirit. Let me say that slowly just in case anyone miss it. I'm gonna mark my words. The day we as Christians come into the fullness of the value, the immeasurable value, the, the unbelievable wealth that is in us by the Holy Spirit, it is the day when we will never be broke again. We will never be broke again. The value of the Holy Spirit is more valuable than all of the wealth of the world combined. If you pick the top three wealthiest people in the entire world, including Jeff Be Bezos and, um, and, and, and Mark Zuckerberg and um, what's Elon Musk, if you pick those three men alone and combine their wealth 
the wealth of the Holy Spirit in us supersedes their wealth without a thought. It doesn't even begin to be a blip on God's bank account. What the wealthiest men in the world have. And we have him inside of us. We have him inside of us. All we have to do is learn how to access that bank account. Access that wealth. Guys, I'm giving you hints how to pray. Lord, I have been poor in spirit, but also poor in the natural. I don't want to be poor in the natural. I want to be poor in the spirit. Because in poverty of spirit, come on, which means humility, honor, submission, purpose-driven, according to the word, living according to the will and purpose of God. Poor in spirit means that we're not pompous or high or uppity, but submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's where we should be poor. We should not be poor in the natural. But we, all of us, including me, have not learned how to access the bank account of the Holy Spirit. We have not learned. Now, some of you might be saying, but Pastor Wade, I see some people out there who have accessed the power of the Holy Spirit and they're using that power to gain wealth. They are using that power to gain wealth. I am not talking about using the power to gain wealth. I'm talking about using the power to bring health, using the power to set free, using the power to make whole. When, our, 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 when we use the power of the Holy Spirit, when we unlock the power of the Holy Spirit and begin to use the power of the Holy Spirit to be a blessing, to win souls, come on, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to open blind eyes, to open deaf ears, to loose tongues that are bound by dumbness, come on, or mute, to repair hearts, to restore kidneys, to balance blood pressure, to reduce blood sugar, to wipe out cancer. When we begin to use the access of to our bank account of power and minister to the people of God, you will not have to try to sell anything to anyone. You will never have to ask anyone for anything. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> the anointing of God in terms of manifested miracles and power has not even been demonstrated 0.1% from my life yet. There is so much more to go. I have not even begun to scratch the surface, not even the tip of the surface. And yet still, I am a full-time minister. I don't go to my bed hungry. My bills are paid and I never have to ask people, so, 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 I need your help. So, so, I need your help. So, I need your help. God touches persons who he desires to touch by the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we live each month. Just imagine if I could look and say, Ah, oh, Sister Deborah, the Spirit of the Lord says, As you spoke last night, as you said so and so, as you said that you want to come up higher, you want to do this and that. If I could speak into your life perfectly what you were thinking just now, what you asked God for last night or this morning. Imagine how excited you would be to go into your bank account and send me some money because you feel so blessed. Imagine how much you would want to bless me because you think, oh, he's a mighty man of God. Without I have to ask. We are not supposed to uh, 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 profit from God's favor, from God's anointing, from God's word. But we're supposed to be blessed. There's a difference with being blessed from the anointing of God that is on our lives and profiting. Profiting comes as a result of marketing a product, selling a product, 
Let me teach you something this morning by the Holy Ghost. When you profit, it means that you have, you, you have gotten a return on your investment. You have sold something and what value you got back for that something that you made a profit. Come on. So you charge the doctors, the doctors and lawyers work out how much money they spend for their schooling. Doctors and lawyers work out how much money they have spent for their schooling. And because of how much they have spent over the years, come on, especially if they had to go back and do refresher courses and upgrade specialized courses, when they charge you, they charge you different from those who just graduated and started working on the basic of their, of their degree. Those who spent more to gain more and become specialists, they charge you more to see them because they have bigger bills and they paid a bigger price. They studied longer, harder. They spent more years in school. And so they put a price on that and they charge you. The same thing is happening in church. There are some people who will boast and say, I fasted two or three times for the year, 40 days at a time, and then one day, two day, and three day in between. I live a life of fasting. Some people will tell you, I fasted for the entire year, 365 days. I fasted from 5 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon for the entire year. And so my anointing that I paid this price for, you got to pay big for it. When you come before me, you better bring a thousand US dollars, 10,000 US dollars, 150,000 Jamaican dollars. Come on. You got to bring some big money because I paid the price. You didn't go to university. You got a gift yes you spend time before god but you gay hey, come on hallelujah love and faith are the two elements that we are supposed to put out there they are the two things we're supposed to pray and ask god for hear me carefully if you have to fast 40 days three times for the year to gain power you probably are doing it because you want to profit from the, the, the gospel. God wants to give us what we need for life and godliness. God wants to give us what we need to win souls for the kingdom. God wants to give us what we need to bring glory to his name. He wants to give it to us. The truth is most of us don't know what that is. We think it's difficult. You know why? Because we grew up in a system that says you either have to be born a prophet, born an apostle, born to lead, or you have to spend countless hours and countless years prying it out of God's hand. Prying it out of God's hand. You have to fast until you're almost dead. In order to get that anointing that is going to make you great. If you have to sacrifice so much to be great, maybe God didn't want you to be great, but because of his grace, he made you great. He didn't want you to die. He didn't want you to commit suicide trying to find him. Listen to me, guys. Jesus died on the cross to give us access. He died on the cross and rose again, sent the Holy Spirit to give all of us access. What are we accessing? What is our purpose? Each of us have a purpose. And each of us, is the, are, are, we, are, we are designed to access something. If you want more, if you want more than what you were designed to access, then you're going to pay a heavy price. But don't charge people for that price. Because what God has given me, I didn't have to pay a big price for. Why? Because Jesus already paid that price. Now, if I want to become a prophet, if I want um, to, 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 to be a seer, as they call it, to see through walls, to hear secret things in secret places, I am going to have to pay a bigger price. But why do I want it? Do I want to see through walls so that I can say to someone, I saw you in your house this morning and I saw that you put on a red dress and I saw that you were saying to God, 
let someone pick me out today at church and minister a word to me. And because I see that, I can tell you some other things, but you got to bring up big money. That's not the reason why you are you, you were born to see. That is why God gave some people, without them having to ask, the ability to see and the ability to hear and the ability to know, the ability to sense. Come on. The ability to teach with great precision and accuracy. God gave it to us sovereignly because he knows what he wants to accomplish. If we decide, whether through jealousy or just through desire or, or, or coveting the good gifts, if we desire to go after it, then we must have the right motive. We must have the right motive. I would love to prophesy accurately like anyone else. Paul says we must covet to prophesy. Covet to prophesy. Check 1 Corinthians 13. Covet to prophesy. Prophecy is an awesome thing. It helps the church to grow. It encourages the body of Christ. We should covet to prophesy. But if we're going to go on 40 day fasts, fasts, let me make up a word. That means more than one 40, 40 day fast. Until we twist God's arm in to make us an awesome prophet. But all we're doing is we want to prophesy so that we can collect money, so that we can walk around saying we're the most accurate prophet anywhere, so that we can tell people, bring a seed, never go before the prophet empty-handed, but then you're dictating how much they must bring. If that's the reason to fast and to pray and to seek God and to, and to, and to give and to do all these things, then you would have missed it. You will accomplish it because God is faithful, but you would have missed it. You would have missed it. People of God, you can get more. Hear me carefully. I want to teach you. You can get more than what God ordained for you to have. You can. It is possible. You can get more than what God ordained for you to have. But do not seek more. Do not seek more so you can go on tour. Do not seek more so you can profit. Seek more so you can make a difference. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Seek more that you can make a difference. Seek more that you can be an answer to what ails the world. Seek more not because you want to be numbered among the Mark Zuckerbergs and the and the and the um and the wealthy people of the world or even the, the, the famous the famous pastors and prophets of the world seek more that you can make a difference seek more that you can make a difference can God make you an awesome accurate prophet and you come on Facebook and not tell everybody that you are a prophet? Can you do a live and speak thus saith the Lord without saying, oh, my name is Prophet Ron Wade? Can you do that? Can you do that? There are people who have not prophesied a word that has come to pass yet, but they're introducing themselves as prophet this and prophet that. They have not grown into the office of prophet. They have not matured as a prophet but they're introducing themselves oh my name is your name is not prophet anything if you're an authentic prophet from God and I mean no disrespect if you are a if authentic prophet from God and this is for us family we must know we must know this because this is the truth of God from the Bible if one is chosen as an authentic prophet of God come on prophet is a title it's not your name just like Mr. is not your name. It's a title. Mr. tells you that you're a man. Mrs. or Miss tells you that you are a girl, a lady, married, or just a woman. That's what Mr. or Miss or Mrs. represents. It's just like prophet. Prophet tells what you do. Prophet tells what you do. So my name is Rowan Wade. And I'm a prophet of God. So I speak the words of God. But there are some persons who want to be prophet all the time. 
the wife and children at home have to call them prophet. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Let us seek to be who God has called us to be. Let us desire even more because more is available. There are no limits to God. Come on. Joylet Mackenzie, there are no limits to God. Joylet Mackenzie, stop limiting God. Stop limiting God. Joylet Mackenzie, desire more. Come up higher. Desire more. God wants you to reach out and touch. God wants you to say, Lord, what I feel in my spirit I am supposed to be, I am not that yet. I want more than what I am doing now, more than how I am living now. You can desire more. Come on, Haley. There is still more. You have reached great heights, but there is still more. Come on. Hallelujah. Shelly Hope. There is still more. Reach in and grab more. Reach in and grab more. But before you reach in and grab, hear me carefully. Before you reach in and grab what God has to offer, you better know what you're going to do with it. You better know why you need it. You better know why you're reaching out for it. You better know why you're asking God for it and that's why we have to develop love and faith before we go after gifts and talents and abilities love and faith has to be rooted and grounded in us before we go after gifts because if we go after gifts first and then try to develop love it's gonna be difficult if we get gifts before we have faith the moment our gifts come under attack we're gonna have problems with faith let us pray if you want to fast about something fast and say Lord let the love that was in you be developed in me let the faith that you had to be sleeping when water was coming in a boat. Let the faith that you had, Lord Jesus, that caused you to walk out on a sea while there was a storm going on, I would certainly not try that. I would wait until it's calm and then walk out on the water. You walked out on the water while there was a storm going on. That kind of faith is what I need, Lord Jesus. That's how we got to pray. Because when God gives us that extraordinary love and that unconditional faith or that extraordinary faith and that unconditional love everything else flows like that just like that just like that hallelujah elisha didn't say lord give me power he said give me a double portion of the anointing or the holy spirit that is in the mantle of elijah what was in the mantle of elijah love and faith the love and faith produce power the love and faith produce glory the love and faith cause the axe head to float The love and faith cause an axe head to float. The love and faith cause the woman who had nothing but a little bit of oil to become wealthy overnight. She was able to pay off all her debts and had more than enough oil to sell to live off for the rest of her life and for her children. Love and faith caused her did you see where elijah elisha said um come bring a seed did he say bring a seed and i will cause you to to, to to your life to change did he say bring a seed and i will shift everything that concerns you did he say that listen I, I, please, I know that some of us are deeply rooted in the prophetic. We love the prophets. I love the prophets too. I have many prophet friends, many, many prophet friends.
I would never speak against them. That's not what this is about. I'm saying to you, we must grow, especially in these times and in these seasons, because there is coming a time and that time is already now and growing worse, where the false prophets, false teachers are coming to the fore. Look at, 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 at Second Peter. Hallelujah. The, the false prophets and the false teachers are coming to the fore. They're coming up in great numbers. They're coming. They're coming with a rush. They're coming with a rush, with a rush with a rush and we will think because we honor and respect and seek after the prophetic that it's going to be okay if we get tricked by false prophets it is not okay god told us jesus told us that they will come in the, the the apostles in their writings peter wrote and told us be aware because false prophets and false teachers are coming and they will come to trick you to steal from you to misguide you to mislead you to misdirect you to lead you off into dark dry places and so we uh, by the Spirit of God, need to learn how to be sensitive, how to identify. Don't get swept up, guys, into the euphoria of an of a, of a accurate word. Every divination spirit can give an accurate word. Come on, people of God. It would be remiss of me not to even at the risk of sounding like I'm fighting against the gifts of God. It would be remiss of me to be so fearful that I don't tell you that even a divination spirit can give an accurate word. The girl that was walking around for days with Paul and Silas kept prophesying, these men are mighty men of God. They are men of valor. They bring the word of Jesus Christ accurately. They are mighty men. That was a pr Listen, if that was me, I'm telling you honest truth, I wouldn't even be trying to discern that this is a divination spirit. I would have been so floating on her words, her, her tone crier. You know what a tone crier is? For those who are overseas and those who have never experienced or heard the word, a tone crier is a, a, a means of advertising that is mobile. And so we, we in Jamaica, we put like speakers, um, a sound system in a car or in a van and put a speaker on top of it. And, um, and, and messages, you drive through the community. So if you're doing an evangelistic service, you would drive through the community and do a town crier and says, come out on Wednesday morning at 7 p.m., 7 a.m., sorry. <laughs> come out Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. The Lord is going to show up. You will be blessed. Come on out to, to 32 uh, uh, Red Hills Road and come hear the word of the Lord. Come be, come be blessed. Come be healed. Come be delivered. Come be set free and made whole. And so the, the, the town crier, he drives through the town and cries out so that people hear. Amen? Hallelujah. But God doesn't need a town crier. God does not need a town crier. We must know by the Spirit of God who is on our side. So this girl was a town crier telling everybody. But the people already knew by the spirit. The people already knew by the teaching who Paul and Silas were. So why was she being a town crier? And they discovered that one, they didn't invite her. Two, that she was like a scratch record and something triggered a thought in Paul's mind. And he recognized that though she was saying what was true, though she was accurate in her prophecy, it was from a demonic spirit designed to produce pride in Paul and Silas. Come on. Designed to produce pride in Paul and Silas. Because if I went somewhere to preach, just think of it. Let's be real. I can be real because, hey, I'm human. I can be real. If I went to a church to preach, if I went to my own church that God has given me responsibility for, and from I got to the door, two people came to meet me, helped me to carry my things inside, and they kept saying, Pastor, you are so anointed. Pastor, you are a mighty man of God. Pastor, you have the word of God in you. Pastor, you are blessed and highly favored. Pastor, you look good. Your outfit look good. 
I'm going to feel good. I'm going to be like, thank you, thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. And I'm going to be smiling from ear to ear. And all that is doing is building up pride. Building up pride. Building up pride. But what is that designed to do? To make that day the worst message you've ever preached. Because all of a sudden, it becomes about you being mighty, you being knowledgeable, you being anointed, you being great. And you stop depending on the Holy Spirit. So, so, so the process that you used to go through when you go into your prayer closet and you say, Lord, all of you and none of me, take my tongue and teach me what to say. Minister through me today, O Lord. Because you've been puffed up by all of these accolades and all of this priming and pumping and pageantry about how great you are and mighty man of valor, mighty woman of valor you are. You go out and try to speak the word of God from the mightiness that is on you. And everybody's wondering, oh, what happened to pastor today? This, the, ugh, this one miss. Pastor didn't spend time in the prayer closet this time at all. This message miss. And people will humor you and bow and nod and, and, and just sit there looking kind of lost. Like, I can't wait for this day to finish. Why? Because we were pumped up. So, so, so the spirit of divination had a plan. It was hoping for pride, come on, to take over and become the central focus of Paul and Silas. So when the enemy's plan didn't work, it worked for a few days, but then when Paul discovered that this person was just pandering and catering to their ego instead of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, he cast out that devil. So we must become sensitive. Hear me carefully. We must become sensitive. Listen and look and pay attention. Is this prophet more focused on how they look? Is this prophet or prophetess more focused on themselves being glorified and aggrandized over Jesus? Is it more about their outfit and how they prophesy instead of what they're prophesying? Come on, these are little things that most of us miss. Because we don't pay attention to the details. Pay attention to the details. How does this prophet strut as opposed to walk? There is a difference. You walk in humility. You strut in pride. Now I'm not asking you to go be critics. And to be unsubmissive and judgmental. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking us to be like Paul and Silas. Give everyone an opportunity to show themselves to be authentic. Give a legitimate effort to everyone to show themselves as authentic. But do not give yourself wastefully or unwisely to those that are not authentic that's all i'm saying hear me let me say it again for the record we as people of god must be like paul and silas give a person an opportunity like paul and silas gave the girl a few days to prove that the, she is authentic but keep looking keep watching keep sensitive do not become emotional and drawn up into the pride of what is being said or what is being done. Be sensitive in your spirit. Lord, show me if this person is authentic. Show me if this person is legitimate. Show me if this is a true child of God, a true prophet of God. Show me if this is your town crier. And if God says, whoops, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. It is not for you then to jump up and say, hmm, you're false. Demon, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. You went to visit the church. If you are uncomfortable and you think that the pride and the atmosphere will contaminate you. Beg pardon. 
act like you're going to the bathroom, jump in your car and take away yourself. If not, stay there and pray in the spirit. Father, I pray for the soul of this person. Father, pride has taken them over. Maybe you call them to be great. Maybe you call them to do good. Maybe you call them to, 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 to walk in your will. But God, poverty, God, uh, love of money, God, love of things, love of looking good, love of expensive shoes and clothes have drawn them away to become a, a, a desire to profit of the prophetic rather than to serve people but father i know you can shift it i know you can turn it around ah father god i know that you have, have have more than enough the heart of the king is in your hand and you can turn it whichever way you so choose and so you you move from going there to get a word to becoming the word come on somebody come on somebody you go there to get a word to be encouraged but God wanted you to be the carrier of the word. And so the word now is you praying up this person, praying for their restoration, praying for them to move from being one who profits from the prophetic to one who serves by the prophet, the prophetic. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I don't know why I've been on this for, for a few days now, but I'm saying to you, guys, we have to be sharp because the day is coming and is now here where the false prophets are coming out of the tree roots and they are coming sometimes even being introduced by legitimate, authentic prophets that we know and admire and love. The false prophets are sometimes being planted as babies in families. In prophetic families and they are growing up under prophetic covering but are false listen to me carefully Eli's sons Samuel's sons Eli's sons were born to Eli look what they became research it Google Eli's sons they did horrible but they grew up in the temple they grew up with Eli Samuel was placed in the temple with Eli. He grew up in the temple with Eli. Yet his sons didn't walk in the way that he would have. <coughs> so not because Samuel was such an awesome prophet that none of his words fell to the ground. You are going to, 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 to invite his sons to come preach at your church. To come prophesy because these are Samuel's sons. And you celebrate them and you introduce them. Oh, people of God, stand and give a rounding applause. A rounding applause to the, 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 the sons of Samuel. Today they are going to minister to us. Do you know if the sons of Samuel are just like Samuel? Or are you introducing them to your life? Only because they are the sons of Samuel or the sons of Eli. That's all I'm asking. Do not use what you know about one prophet to assess and to access another. Access each man by the spirit, not by the flesh. Know no man after the flesh, only after the spirit. That's all I'm saying. Because these are dangerous times coming. And most people today, a lot of us as Christians, are afraid to tackle these subjects because they don't want persons to start praying against them or to seem like they are fighting against um, God's prophets or whatever. I'm not afraid in the least bit. I'm not concerned in the least bit. You know why? Because I know where my heart is. I know what my heart position is. I know that I first have to answer to Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the Holy Spirit that is in me each day. He knows whether I'm being mean, vindictive, jealous, conniving, bad mind, envious. He knows. I can't hide that whether I say it publicly or privately. He knows. But I have a responsibility to every single one of you that takes time out each morning to come be in the presence of God that I hope that I carry. Every single one of you that listens to me intently, I have a responsibility to make sure, 
to make sure that as best as I can, I listen to the Holy Spirit and I speak as the Holy Spirit directs. If I speak from my prejudice, if I speak from my fears, if I speak from my pride, if I speak from my experience, if I speak from my lust, if I speak from my greed, then I will pay a hefty price at the hands of the Lord. But if I speak from the Spirit of God that is in me, I may pay a hefty price from the hand of men, but I would rather be in the hand of the Lord than in the hand of men, because at least God has mercy. Men hardly ever does. Let us make a significant effort to not be tricked anymore. Almost every person that is hearing my voice this morning have been tricked, have sown seeds that they should not have sown, have cast pearls before swines, have put money on evil altars out of desperation to get a prophetic word because we were not sensitive to what the word of God says and what God requires of us. I say to you this morning, no more, no more evil altars. We're not putting our money, we're not putting our time into any more evil altars. No more. Before, as we say in Jamaica, before so, <laughs> before so, we create our own altar at home and pray to God ourselves. Read our Bible ourselves. Ask the Holy Spirit to be our prophet. That's why the Lord inspired me to teach you guys how to be the prophet of your own life. Because there is coming a time and that time is now when you will not know who is authentic. Because accuracy is not going to determine authentic. Fruit is not always going to determine authentic. You know why? And some of you right away when I say that will say, Pastor, how could you say that? The Bible says, by their fruit you will know them. Really? Okay, listen to me from my perspective. Which prophet are you going to go around with for weeks to see his fruit? You think a prophet is going to show you a bad fruit on the night when he's prophesying to you or during the four days of the convention? Come on, people of God, be mature. I'm not knocking you. I'm just, I, I, I'm speaking, right? Glory to God. So you're not going to see fruit, rotten fruit, at the convention. You're not going to see rotten fruit at the conference. Hardly. There's some that you will because they can't help themselves. Like pride. Come on. Some you might see lost. I remember I went to see a prophet. Hallelujah. Pastor Marsha and I. And the moment I stepped into the room, I began to feel the spirit of lust. There was the person who was serving the prophet, who was serving the prophet, the, the, the young Alma bearer who was serving the prophet right in the mid in the room in front of me. Right in front of me, one chair over from me was uh, soliciting intimacy from one of the church members, the young lady that was in front of me. I heard him with my own ears and she's saying to him, why do you want me to come home with you? I don't want to come home with you. I don't want to go home with you. I don't want to go to your house. He was soliciting her and I, I won't say the words that he used but I'm saying to you there was a spirit of lust in the atmosphere. I picked it up and I heard them afterwards. And I'm here to tell you that uh, all right, let me let me let me let me leave that alone. But I I can tell you what I discerned and what I felt God showed me um in that area about others as well including but not exclusive too. If we are sensitive, if we went, if Pastor Marsh and I went there only to receive a word or to be, 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 be thrilled by the, uh, the, the, the grand atmosphere and the grand word and the grand way of prophesying, come on, and the flashing of water and all these kinds of things, if that's what impressed us, we would have been contaminated we would have been contaminated because we went, we would have gone there naive. We would have opened a portal for this person to pour into our lives 
naively and we would have come away needing deliverance. I would have to call Sister Sonia White and Sister Sonia Nichols and say, please, Sister Sean Channa, can, can, can six or seven or ten of you come together and begin to pray for us because we have been contaminated by a devil. We would have to call prayer warriors. But everywhere that I go, even when I'm listening, Joshua Selman is one of the persons I listen to intently. Prophet Rovi Elias is somebody I listen to intently, but I never let my guard down. Everything I'm listening to them preaching, every single word that I'm listening to them preaching, I listen intently because sometimes someone can go off in the middle of what is good. Ladies, if you listen to a man who is trying to court you, if you knew this before you got married the first time, or before you got into the relationships that you got into that failed. If you knew how to listen in between the niceness, in between the, oh, you are so beautiful, your eyes are so beautiful. Every time I gaze into your eyes, I feel like I'm wise and I've chosen the best prize. Oh, your voice is so sweet like an angel, it does make noise. If we knew how to listen intently, between the sweetness, the things that are designed to stimulate our flesh, to stimulate our souls. If we knew how at an early age, how to listen intently for where it's going off, we would have identified that there is inconsistencies. There is no inconsistency in God. What God says is truth, the truth, consistently across the, the, the board. When someone speaks truth now and then lies later, truth now and lies later, lies now and then truth later, that inconsistency is not a representation of God. Run. But we pick out the truth, compile them together and go say, I do. Or let's have a relationship. And we ignore the lies. I'm saying to you, people of God, the time has come for that to stop. The time has come for that to stop. Because they are these, these, these false teachers and these prophets that are coming in are leading away foolish men and foolish women and causing serious damage to the lives of many people. Let us not despise prophecy. Let us not despise teaching, but let us be wise. Don't despise, be wise. Don't despise, be wise. Listen carefully. Listen to doctrine. Listen to consistency. Listen to word. Listen to counsel. Listen to your heart. The Spirit of God is in you. When someone says something, for example, any pastor that preaches, any pastor, I don't care who it is, that preaches that a man of God or a woman of God, depending on the office that they're in, can do anything and no one below them can say anything about it or do anything about it. You have to just accept it and that's it. That's a red flag for me. I don't care how anointed, how sincere, how powerful, how, 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 how what office they hold. That's a red flag for me. I'm not going to jump up and scream. I'm not going to call them a heretic. I'm not going to call them a backslider or wicked or, or not of God. None of those things. But that red flag stays on top of my head. Obvious for me and everybody else to see until God gives me the permission to proceed wholeheartedly. Trust no man wholeheartedly people of God. No man, not even me. Not even me. Trust no human being wholeheartedly because human beings can fail. Listen, do not misunderstand what I'm saying. I didn't say love no man wholeheartedly. That's not what I said. Let me set the record straight. Love every man completely unconditionally. But trust no man wholeheartedly because to trust means you will lay down on the water and allow someone to put their hands under you 
and to teach you how to float in deep water. If you, if you don't know this person intimately, personally, completely, why would you let them teach you how to float in 30 feet of water? If you open your eyes and they're not there and you can't swim, you will drown. So trust no man implicitly, but love every man unconditionally. Amen? So who you love? Jesus loved Judas. Jesus loved Judas without question. Jesus loved all of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes without mention. He loved Quintus Pilate, Herod. He loved them, but he didn't trust them. He knew what was up. Come on. Daniel loved Nebuchadnezzar and all the people in his palace, but he didn't trust them. He knew that they didn't have the things of God as their mandate. Amen? And so we must love people without conditions, but be careful. That's why the Bible says, be wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. So we must be wise, come on, in how we function and what we do, but we must love as a dove from above. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these are the days of Elijah. The spirit of prophecy is prevalent in the atmosphere. Everyone wants to prophesy, but not everyone prophesy a lot prophesy and if we're not sensitive if we're not in the spirit if we're not asking God to show us each day who is who and what is what then we will become an open portal for what is evil we will become an open portal for what is evil let's be careful you were warned pray and ask God one thing every person in this family must learn by now how to pray effectively how to pray the word father your word is true your word is not misleading let no one speak into my life into my family into my community even into my nation that which is not of you i shut down every desire of the enemy to speak for your word says that i the weapons of my warfare are not carnal but mighty through you to the pulling down of stronghold every stronghold of every false prophet every stronghold of every false apostle every stronghold from every false pastor every false evangelist that wants to speak over my life that wants to release lust or rejection or or or, or scamming or corruption every 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 false teacher that wants to teach wrong doctrine to drive away or to separate or to infiltrate father we shut it down in the mighty name of jesus christ lord let none of them come nigh our ministry let none come by our church let none come by our project let none come in our conference let none come in our evangelistic crusades let them be let the fire of god God. keep them away let every false prophet every false teacher be kept away from our environment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Lord let their GPS malfunction when they're trying to find their way to our church to our prayer meeting to even our, our our Bible study to even our devotional time in the fourth watch hour father let their GPS malfunction let their their, their Wi-Fi break down oh glory to God amen hallelujah we know how to pray we don't need to be wrestling with these things God has enough authentic legitimate people that he has chosen for such a time as this let's learn the original and throw away the copy let's learn the original and discard the copy you know one thing as we close this morning one thing that I learned about the banking industry I have a few friends that have worked in it including my brother Leighton um, who worked in the banking industry most of them told me um, that 
when they were teaching, when, when persons are being trained to work in the bank, they don't train you with fake notes. They train you with the original notes, the legitimate, authentic money. And you become so one with that money, the feel, the texture, the look, the elements that are in it. You learn the money, the real authentic money, to the point where anything that comes that doesn't look like the real thing, you spot it without trying. God wants to teach us how to spot fakes without trying. But in order to do that, we must know the real thing. Or somebody should bring an offering for that. In order to know the genuine, in order to know the fake man, ladies, who wants to get married, in order to identify the one that is not of God, you have to know the one of God. You have to know the authentic man. You have to know what a real man, a God man, is supposed to be and do and say and think and speak. You have to know what that looks like and sound like. So that when the fake comes, even when it speaks good, you will know it's not good. Because it cannot consistently speak truth and love and demonstrate faith. Because it will get tired of doing what is right. Because it wasn't built or designed or ordained to do right. But we, the authentic men of God and women of God, were ordained and built and refurbished and prepared to do right and to live right. Let us start spotting the counterfeits. Too many of us have been hurt by counterfeits. No more. We reject and cancel, cramp and paralyze every counterfeit spirit that, has seek, that is seeking to come against us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We set fire to every counterfeit spirit, every counterfeit evangelist, every counterfeit pastor, every counterfeit teacher, every counterfeit prophet, every counterfeit uh, apostle. We set fire, boom, fire, boom, fire, boom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every demonic counterfeit sent to draw us away like foolish women. We set fire to them now and we declare that we are the five virgins that are wise. Our lamps are tilled and we have a full tank of oil in reserve. We will never be out of light and we will see through the darkness when the counterfeits are coming in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so pray, people of God, pray. Because in these days, remember I told you this today. In these last days, they are coming out of the woodwork. They're coming out of the trees, out of the grass, out of the sea, out of the river, out of the second heaven, and out of the dirt. They are coming in great numbers. You see them every day. Every day, there is at least 10 or 15 new prophets. How do you know who is real? Check. Spend time with the real Holy Spirit and the real word and the fakes, the counterfeits will identify themselves without you having to try. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Again, this was not where I was going to go this morning, but the Lord chose to go there, and so I trust him, and I give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hope that you were blessed. And if you were not, join us again tomorrow because God will have another word in another time that will certainly bless you. So any day that you don't get what you were looking for, come back the next day, man. I guarantee you, God will provide what needs to be, to be a blessing to you for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. The Lord lead you follow. That's right, Sister Sean. No other choice, no other hope. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Um, before we have our communion, I'd like to take a minute to just pray. This is a season, um, a, a, a change in season, a change in atmosphere. Lots of persons' sinuses are being affected. Lots of persons are getting colds and flu. Um, whole families are being knocked out with this thing that's going on. Hallelujah. And it will be remiss of me not to at least mention in prayer, hallelujah, uh, persons who are, are being stricken by 
the, 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 the atmospheric um, contamination or viruses that are in the atmosphere. So let us pray. Come on, hallelujah. And if you have not um, been so stricken, then agree with me and pray for those who have been amen hallelujah father we thank you that you are the one that watches over us we thank you lord that you said that healing is the children's bread you said by your stripes we are healed father we thank you this day that every issue every pollen every change of climate change of atmosphere that affects those that have sinus disorders sinus issues father we reverse that curse now in the mighty name of jesus christ we speak to every sinus and we command you in the name of the lord jesus christ be made whole i speak into the sinuses i speak into the lungs i speak into the throat I speak to every part of the body right now and I command healing right now in the name of Jesus. Every flu symptom, every cold symptom, every cough symptom, I reverse your curse. I cancel your assignment right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I declare and decree that no sickness or disease shall come nigh us for only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, let the wicked spirit of infirmity receive fire. Receive fire, receive fire now. Every infirmity, whatever way, form, or type you come as, we declare that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord to the glory of Jehovah God, the Father. We cancel your assignment, you foul, unclean spirit of infirmity, and we send you back to dry, dark places and do not return. We will live out the rest of this year in health and strength, prosperity and good success according to the will and purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I bless you when I speak health and healing and prosperity and good success to you and to your household in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, it's time for communion. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that you will sanctify and bless these, these emblems. Bless them to our bodies that it will bring health and strength, prosperity and good success in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, someone on Instagram seem to be first time it says good morning good morning to you pastor wade and your and your teachers in the space um in the space in this space uh and he says yet there are not many teachers i am looking forward to coming back to you oh friends hallelujah thank you saints of the most holy in jesus mighty name glory to god guys someone has come has listened has learned and is, is 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 excited about this family and that's all that we ask we ask that god will bless us to be a blessing to whomever hears us and hear the authentic genuine sincere love by faith that we desire to express we owe no man nothing but to love we love you and we declare God's favor over you. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now, by the grace of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go forth, my family, and have an amazing day, God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day, his way. 
in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus loves you and we love the whole of honor too. God bless you. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Productive, progressive, positive. And make sure that you make it productive, positive and progressive for someone else as well. Be a blessing. Go out of your way to help someone to accomplish something good in their lives today that they may smile and say, I met Jesus through one of his sons or daughters today in Jesus' name. Be blessed. It is well. God bless you. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, have a good one, man. You are blessed and highly favored. Go take on the day. Hallelujah. And let it be manifested God's way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you guys. Bye. You are awesome in this place.